Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Mia O'Neill and this is Alex Hoffman, owner of ProTech. And today we're bringing you a new kind of D2D podcast that is for the streets. So here with the streets, we're going to be interviewing different people from all around the nation, from tons of different companies and giving you a new idea of reps and also owners who may have some interesting stories. A lot of times on the podcast, we have some of the top performers and it's super inspiring. At the same time, a lot of people are going through harder things in life and you might be at a place in your door-to-door career where you're not really thriving or things are hard or you're going through something tough and you're just at a place where you might feel unrelatable and like you're not sure how to get from where you're at now to where you want to be in the future. So with this segment, we're going to be interviewing different people from around the nation um, and just showing a different side of the story. Um, A lot of people, you look at them and they seem so normal and cool and they own these companies and they're doing so well, but what they've been through is insane. Like you would never guess it just talking to these people in the first few conversations and like not until they really open up would you get to see what's really behind the door. So with that... (laughs) Uh, (laughs) So with that, I'm going to dive in. And if you or any of your reps or any people that you work with, you know of any really good stories, please submit them to the D2D experts on Instagram or to Sam Taggart himself. Um, And we'll be kind of doing a collection of stories over time and hopefully helping people to find relatability and inspire them from the beginning to the end. And also, just so you guys know, the tour is coming up. Tickets are selling super fast. It is May 17th to June 18th, and we're going to 10 states and 10 events. Um, It's going to be incredible. Tickets are only $40, so definitely take advantage of that. It's at our website, the door-to-door or the d2dexperts.com. It's an opportunity for you to bring your entire team, which is so sick because, like, think of this. You have the whole summer ahead of you, right? And you're at just the beginning. They're going to be with you all summer, like, These people are with you and you're with them all summer. Like they're going to be hearing your correlation, hearing your training, hearing your same motivation. So this is an incredible opportunity to not only get some of the best sales training in the entire world for door to door from Sam Taggart himself, but also to hear a new kind of perspective, training and motivation than they're going to be used to for the rest of the year. So this really sets the tone. And if you go in strong to the summer, then every single day, every single cell is going to be so much more efficient, effective, and it's just going to be a way more productive summer and also season, even if it's not just a summer program. So definitely check that out. Also, we have boot camps coming up, summits, all sorts of things. And if you have not been to one of our events, they are so fun. I'm obsessed with them. He's been to yeah, a ton of them. We had a blast, even just uh, two days ago. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. We just got back Sales from the summit. sales summit. How how cool was that? It was epic. There was training, workouts, competitions, door pitches. It was amazing. Learned so much, still processing, and about to implement it coming this week and this month. So, yes. exciting. Love it. Mm-hmm. It seriously was so fun. So, I highly encourage you <laughs> to go to our website, schedule a demo call with our guys, and... I don't know, come to whatever is next, because I promise you it will change your game and your life. All right. On that note, mm-hmm. this is Alex Hoffman, everyone. He is the owner of ProTech Roofing, Heating, and Air. Um, do you want to say a little something about yourself? Um, I'm Alex Hoffman. I've been in kind of contracting industry for the past seven years. Started on the air conditioning side. Took on roofing, started ProTech about a year ago now. Um, we've done some scaling, been working with Sam and the experts on door-to-door and sales training in general, and then all aspects of the business. So we've come a long way in the past year. And, uh, you know, now we've, we've got, I think, 12 employees now. We've got a team of reps, and we just had a storm hit, so we're all pumped here. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, Woo. it's going great. Sweet. I love it. Mm-hmm. So the reason I asked Alex to do a podcast in the beginning, um, we were actually at the sales summit Mm -hmm. and we were just sitting down for dinner. He's part of the circle, which is the elite um, mastermind that Sam hosts. It's a lot of owners of different companies in the door to door or sell space. And we have some legends in there. Like Michael Mm O'Donnell is in there. And I mean, a ton of people like all these different companies. So when did you join? 
Uh, I've been in the circle now like three, four months that we joined, so relatively new. But nice. yeah, I've already gotten immense value out of it. We hop on, you know, Zoom calls every month. We do challenges and assign reading that we all do and then talk about. So it's it's been huge as far as like just the accountability of really high level people. You almost you raise your own bar when you've got those people around you. So it's yeah. pretty epic. Totally. Mm -hmm. The circle is huge. It's one of Sam's favorite things that we do. And it's cool too, like just this weekend, like all of the expert guests that we had come train, a lot of them after were like stoked. All of them. Like they came to train all the guys that came. And every single one of them was like, that was so cool, dude. Yeah. Like, how can I get more involved? Like, what can I do? Like, anything you need. Like, if there's more training events I can come to, like, whatever it is, like, please involve me. And Sam's answer to all of them was like, dude, join the circle. Yeah. Like, it's such a cool group of people with such high-level minds within it. And then just adding more and more of the experts, like, who – and all these guys own companies, and they've done hundreds of millions in sales and, like – they're just the baddest in the biz. Mm -hmm. They're all joining the circle. It's very elite, but I mean, I don't know if you would qualify for that, but it's definitely worth a call. And if not, we have other programs yeah. that you could be a part of. But yeah, it's cool that that's how you got into all this. Mm -hmm. Was it just before D to D con or how'd you find out about it? About the circle? Mm -hmm. That was, we bumped into Sam at a, a conference in Orlando, like a roofing conference. And we went into one of his breakout sessions and then just kind of started talking with him afterwards. And was that the first you met, first mm -hmm. you'd like ever heard of Sam? No, we had done some uh, some training with SVGU, and then like Sam was featured on there back when he had his long hair. <laughs> and you know, we had saw him, and like his training on there was epic. And then uh, we saw him at the roofing conference and got to talking with him, and then uh, flew out to Utah, got involved, reached out. It's just the cool part about it is like it's a bunch of people who, you know, are always open to learning and want help. But it's also people that, you know, are willing to take help and give help. So it's kind of like yeah. facilitates and goes with our culture of like everybody teaching and learning at the same time. So it's like that's the kind of people that we attract and the kind of people that we want to be. So totally. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah, it is true. It's like not only is it people that want to grow and like grow their own businesses, but it's also like experts in the field right. that join for exposure and for more opportunities like i know that a lot of people in the circle spoke at ddd con this year right. and a lot of people in the circle spoke at sales summit yeah. like different so it's people things. that want to give back as well and like help others that's where we get a lot of our fulfillment yeah. from too so, so sick mm -hmm. it's so cool so yeah shameless promotion right there yeah. it truly is such a cool opportunity. Oh, man. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> so now, so as I was saying, the reason I asked him to do this podcast, so we were sitting at dinner, just chatting. It was him and our buddy Mark. Yep. And we're just, like, talking, and I don't even know how this got brought up, but he has a pretty insane story. Mm -hmm. So, like, like I mentioned before, like, you see him now. Like, I see you, and I'm like, oh, like normal, yeah. Like pretty well put together. Well put together, dude. Owns a company. <laughs> like, oh, he's chilling. Like, yeah. it's probably pretty like vanilla. Like, I don't know. Just kind of assuming it, you yeah. know. And that could not be further from the truth. Mm -hmm. So, I don't even know the best way to dive into it. Like, I guess kind of a brief history of like. You. Yeah. So I'll I'll just kind of give you a brief history of me and my story, and kind of go back to what you said at the beginning of where. You know, there's some people that you see and watch all these experts. You go to all these meetings and everybody's very, like, high level in this. And there can be some disconnect because some, some people are at different places in their life. So some people that are down, there's, you know, not much relation for someone that's kind of operating on a higher frequency and really, like, crushing things. It's, it's tough to find there. Yeah. So getting from that down place to that up place is something that we all kind of can struggle with at some points in our life. So oh, yeah. that one for me was a very big step as far as coming from down here to up here. Cause the person that you see now is not the person that I always was and <laughs> rewind, you know, four and a half years ago, I was in college, went to Florida state university. Um, it, and a brief, you know, a, a brief history of my past and who I was, you know, as a kid, I was, you know, a smaller kid, a little bit of a chameleon or never really could relate very well to people. You know, I always felt a little bit 
out, but someone who, you know, I'd always try and always try and relate to people and blend in and fit in. But there was some disconnect that I didn't really always feel like a part, you know? And I think a lot of people can relate with that, at least at some point in their life, is they never really feel like a part. And that's one of, as humans, something that we always strive for is connectedness. You know, I think even Bert was talking about the tribe, like, like primally, like we want to belong. So with that, um, not really ever feeling comfortable. I kind of turned in college towards like drinking and partying as, as a way to kind of ease that. And, you know, those whatever unsettling feelings inside or not belonging, like alcohol, drinking, partying all made that better. And that's what I turned to as my solution. But, Hmm. um, that quickly kind of spiraled into like an unhealthy way of solving a deeper problem within myself, you know? So, uh, through that experience, what kind of ended up happening is I would, you know, pretty much I was still maintaining grades and, you know, I was always very smart. So that was easy part. On the outside, everything looked okay, but on the inside, like I was not content. I was not happy or anything. So as I started getting deeper into the years in school, um, I started turning to alcohol pretty much daily to help ease whatever problems I was experiencing externally. With that came a, a you know a bevy of other problems, such as like I was getting into fights at the bar. I was, you know, slacking in classes. I was, you know, treating relationships very poorly with people. It was very selfish, self-centered. How I feel was the most important part of it. So very ego-driven lifestyle. Mm. Um, With that, kind of I had a few events that took place that took me to a pretty dark place where this was what I would call like a bottom or like that low level that I was talking that some people can kind of be sitting in where very life is very much just like spinning of the wheels. You're not going anywhere. You're not growing anywhere. Um, you're just kind of stuck. So what happened was is a couple of times as it got worse and worse as I would get into bar fights, nothing would happen. And then, uh, one night I got into a, a, a scuffle with a buddy of mine and like six other guys and we ended up getting into it. One guy got hurt. Um, not like severely or anything, but enough to where it became, you know, an issue with the police and the law. So three days later, I had, uh, the police knocking at my door. Uh, three with a days warrant. later? Yeah. So I was just like, whatever, kept moving. Oh, dang. I thought it was like that night. Mm-hmm. Three days later, they came knocking wow. at the door. And then, uh, they arrested me with, uh, a battery charge, like a heavy felony battery charge, which... Oh my gosh. Yeah, carries like five years in prison, but got a good attorney, got everything kind of like slap on the wrist, no problem, moved on. But still, I didn't change who I was, you know, inside. I didn't change my habits or drinking or anything like that. So I was still solving that problem with unhealthy solutions. After that, I ended up violating the probation, which news to me is you can't, you know, bond out on one of those. So I ended up going to jail for six months of, for this charge. Okay. And this was, you know, four and a half years ago, since I couldn't bond out, it was either up to the judge to reinstate my probation or to send me to prison with the original charge. So it was like a very scary point where it was like out of my hands and I could have been in a very dark place. So six months in jail, my, uh, was an interesting experience, but one that (laughs) I look back on in in gratitude is I find that I learned so much from that experience that it's not something that I would ever want to take, take back because I truly believe that like whatever path we're on is what we need to be learning or where we need to be to grow into the people that, you know, we have to become. So the situation in jail was interesting because you could see I went into it with a positive perspective and this was kind of the first step in the understanding of how, to approach life in a way that made my experience the best possible in the now, if that makes sense. So what happened was I turned into a bit of an entrepreneur in jail. I started, um, so good. <laughs> I, st- <laughs> I started, uh, cooking jail wine out of fermented oranges, um, for like the entire jail. So, um, after being in there a while, I started making wine for, all the people in, in the pod 
And, uh, Entrepreneur. Yeah. So then Real I started thrill. selling it. Yeah. I started selling it. I started making it and then, you know, distributing it to the pod. Um, but it also led to me still drinking in jail every single day because mm. I was still uncomfortable always. And I always needed that. Did they like, notice? No, I don't think. Uh, it was a little bit different. Like, they didn't really care. Like it's some, some of the people knew, didn't care. It was just, you know, like, don't ask, don't tell. And we're just there to punch the clock and do their job too. Like, yeah. you know, so they didn't really want to like start anything. But Makes so sense. anyways, this kind of led into Were a problem. Were you getting like drunk every day? Yeah, just about like at least a good buzz. It's hard to get really drunk off of like fermented orange juice, but you know, we would take. I don't know. We would take, <laughs> I must say I do not know. We would take fermented oranges and then like, you know, we'd have people in the kitchen like steal sugar and like. Oh, you know, people like working it, in the kitchen? Mm-hmm. And like add it to the fermented orange juice and um, then it kind of starts the fermentation process and turns it into Did you wine. get a, did you have a job in jail? No, my job, I just read a lot of books and then like worked out. There was also. Um, is there a gym? No, all we had was a basketball court. Like, so it was just a basketball court and like nothing else. But. It's still, like, you know, you'd go do push-ups and burpees and, like, similar to the workout we did at Sales Summit. It was a lot like a show <laughs> workout. <laughs> <Just laughing. laughs> but, oh, yeah. Uh, that video will be coming later. So if you're curious what a jail workout is, just make sure you check out our Sales Summit um, yeah, it was the outdoor exact same. workout. It was the exact same. It'll be the exact same. But <laughs> That's so awesome. kind of in this in this very dark place that I was in where I was still maintaining, like, my drinking inside a jail and then, like, in the moment, you don't really notice, like, it's hard to look at ourselves sometimes and see a problem. Like, insight can be a difficult thing. So, um, it's important to have, like, really good people around you that can keep you accountable, but also, like, help you look in the mirror when you don't really, like, see or want to see something that yeah. is wrong with you. People so, really are reflections. Like, we're all reflections for each other. Mm-hmm. And, like, the shinier of a mirror you can be, the easier it is for other yeah. people to see themselves. But sometimes people don't like that. It's powerful, though. Yeah, a hundred percent. So yeah, having people that were around me being able to kind of see this in me was an important one. Cause I don't know anybody else's brain, but mine's really good at justifying some of my own, mm. you know, stuff to myself. I where, can see that. Yeah. You know, a lot of us like, you know, type A sales personalities yeah. are pretty good at like coming up with quick answers and especially to ourselves. So um, being able to have people that, that can see that stuff and, and call you out on your own is, is good. But well, I have a question really fast. Mm-hmm. Um, how did you feel in comparison to the other people that were in there? Like, did you feel like, Oh, I'm nothing like these guys. Like I got popped on a weird thing. Like I shouldn't even be here. Like these guys are this, I'm not. Or like, did you feel like, Oh, I'm just one of the guys like here I am in my element. <laughs> no, I mean, I felt a little out of place, obviously. Like I, I was a, college student raised in the suburbia like you know yeah. I've never really been in a situation like that um so I did feel a bit out of place and you know everybody else thought I was a bit out of place too like it's not hard to like you were see young that too. Mm-hmm. but that was kind of initially and then there there was kind of a point where you said you were 21 right when you went in mm-hmm. or yeah because you turned 22 in jail yeah yeah so baby. yeah I had a nice birthday in there but <laughs> No, there was a point in there where you can always like point the finger and be like, oh, like I don't belong here. Like, you know, this is just a fluke or this isn't my fault. So at that same point in there, I had to also start taking some ownership as far as not pointing the finger at other people. Um, And this also happened at the time. It was Christmas Eve, I think of 2016 when, you know, I had I was cooking wine for everybody. I had, you know, five cells that I was training like guys in the gym so I could use their cells and then uh, oh like a give and take yeah it was like a give and take so like these guys would come in and like I would do like pretty regular workouts I would show them how to do it and then also they'd let me like you know kind of hide some stuff in their uh cells (laughs) so then like on Christmas Eve we're like bringing down like a lot of this jail wine for everybody and then somebody had said something to one of the guards and it turned into a whole uh like raid where they came in they're wearing like the plastic masks plastic shields like out of a movie and they came in and we had like all this jail wine so we're like what do we do so we chugged all the wine so that they couldn't like give us like another charge and then like at that point i ended up going to like solitary confinement because they're like that's like jail inside a jail 
I didn't even know that was a thing until yeah. this weekend. But so then, like, at that point, I realized, and it kind of like my attorney, like one of those people around you that's like, can kind of help you look at what's going on and who you are. He was like, dude, like, you know, you're in jail, you're in jail, you're in jail for drinking. Now you're in jail, in jail for drinking. It's like, like something's got to change here. And like, I had that realization, that ownership where it was like, yeah, like. So was it at that point or was it already kind of setting in before that? It was like setting in, but also not, not consciously, you know, it was like, but there was like steps that were being taken prior to that where like I had like some internal belief that, okay, like something's off here. Like I'm obviously not in a place where (laughs) I want to be like sitting in jail, but then it all came to kind of a precipice at that point. So there was like a little bit of a build up to that, but then there was like, I was like, the we got a problem here. right? Yeah, we got a problem here. Did you realize, like, while you were drinking, was it something? Was it ever something where you're like, I don't want to be drinking, I want to be sober, or was it always something like, oh yeah, let's go? No, yeah, it was never like that for me. Thank God, I never really got to that point where it was like, oh, I like, I, I can't stop, but I want to. It was, and some people get there, you know. Dude, it's, that's huge. That's lucky. A so lot yeah, of people I'm get super there. Super grateful that I like. That's why I say I'm grateful for this experience in general. Because yeah, you probably you might have. You might yeah, have, it sounds like you were on that happened. path towards mm-hmm. that. So then that was kind of being able to, to nip it in the bud. Um, and then from there, this chain of events that kind of like put my life together was all a result of like that ownership and that realization and the understanding that like something needed to change. So there's always a point where it's like, all right, something's got to give. And then you take ownership and then you make changes because doesn't really just happen accidentally you can look for the signs around you that say like this is it but that's when it happened for me so then uh after that fast forward um, well so what did happen so they raided it you chugged it all right chugged it all went to solitary confinement yeah hammered drunk got taken down to solitary confinement shoved in there you come out like once a week for an hour and you're stuck in a cell Oh my yeah. gosh, like a cement bed. Like, yeah, yeah, it was pretty miserable. So It's toilet in there. I'm thinking like all the jail movies in there mm-hmm. right now. Yeah, it looked exactly like it. But with that being said, it was like... Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Yeah, it was Christmas. I woke up in solitary confinement hungover. <laughs> Santa? So, yeah, it was not good. But it was also like... You definitely that, got a lump of coal. I like needed it. Yeah, I needed it. I guess that is like the, a Christmas miracle. Mm-hmm. So... And the other light I see in that side of it is, like, I was deprived of just about everything, right? Like, couldn't wear my own clothes. I couldn't see the sunshine. I couldn't even breathe fresh air. Like, I couldn't mm-hmm. sleep until when, it, when I wanted to sleep. They would wake you up at 4 a.m. for breakfast every morning. It was, like, yeah, almost like a psychological torture. They but, wouldn't let you sleep when you wanted to? No, they'll, like, they'll wake you up, like, pretty much every two hours for, like, you know, changing your clothes or, like, eating breakfast at 4 a.m. It's just, like. Just to mess with you. Yeah, just to mess just with Just to make you. it uncomfortable. Right. When would they let you go to bed? Uh, I mean, you could stay up, but they'd let you go to bed at like seven. It wasn't. Okay. Yeah. But it was just like a whole mess. So it also, the experience gave me a new like definition for gratitude or I was able to like really like until I like didn't have any of that stuff, it was all taken for granted. So then with that experience, I was able to be grateful for, you know, sunshine, for fresh air and like the small things that we all take for granted, like being able to wake up and. Mm-hmm. express gratitude for those things that we take granted for you know for granted every single day is another factor that just like was able to pro- propel my life forward because like when you're living in that gratitude and that positivity it's just like you're unstoppable as you've probably found and how probably a lot of people have found yeah amen <laughs> yes so, attitude of gratitude so yeah and and being able to realize and look back on that and see like this is exactly what I needed to like become the person that I need to be. Like I needed everything to be taken away to be grateful for what I have. So that, that was the big experience for me as far as like in the transformative portion. I Mm -hmm. love that. So you're in it, you're in solitary confinement. And then you said you got let out for, to rehab, right? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of interesting. That was like what got you in and what also got you out. Right. Yeah. And like, how long, how long were you supposed to be in? It was, it's like kind of undetermined. It was, there was no like set sentence. It was pretty much you're there until the prosecutor decides whether they want to let you back out or whether they want to charge you with your original charge. So it's like, 
I could have been there for five years. I had no idea if I would get out tomorrow or in 2022, you know, like oh my gosh. next year. That's year. insane. Mm. That's honestly its own punishment. Is like, I feel like anyone, like, especially salesmen, and, or not just salesmen, but like you said, you can justify things in your head. Yeah. Like, if you're like, okay, it's five years, then it's five years, and you can almost set goals. And like, what do I want yeah. within this five years? And like, make a routine of it. Or it's like, okay, it's just yeah, two months. You're like, I'm good. You're left in limbo. Like, like not know. knowing, that's torture. Mm-hmm. That's truly torture. Yeah. But also, like, in the moment, Ugh. perspective is everything, right? So, yeah. you know, it's, I would wake up every day and I would just, you know, remind myself that whatever I want the day to be like, I could either come at it like low and make it horrible or make the best of it, do push-ups, train people, help people, you know, I would like trade for like, you know, hard boiled eggs and like make food and like, you know, so it was like, whatever you make of it, regardless of where you're at. Hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So, so then you got out. So then you went to rehab for two months. What, what uh, was, like, months. the next thing after that? Yeah, three months. I they, I got out. They took the deal. And then I ended up going to rehab, um, which was also a huge experience. Like, all this started, and then I moved to, to talk with some great counselors, therapists, like, do good treatment, was introduced into meditation, was introduced into, you know, yes. daily morning routine of meditation, physical activity, prayer, things like that. It's like the savers, like Miracle Morning. Yeah, exactly. So it lines up with like a lot of the same things that we do today that I was introduced to in that program, as well as some of the other things like making amends with people, you know, pulling up Mm. some of our character defects, addressing them and, you know, fixing all that. So all that was kind of huge and transformative at at the same time where I also picked up reading and then read a great book. It was uh, Letting Go by David R. Hawkins, which kind of talks about removal of negative emotions and then like surrender as far as just like letting what is is and not really like, you know, fighting what's happening, mm-hmm. just kind of going with and then knowing that you're on a path that like you need to be on and helping others. And like all these principles started to kind of come together to where after this came into practice, my life went from like down here to up here rather quickly and it, it showed like to where I had like nothing and then I was presented with opportunities took a sales job these same principles that were super successful in life applied directly to sales and being authentic and then people very trusted I broke every single sales record at the company I was at by like three acts you know like <laughs> wow <laughs> really make new trophies yeah it was like oh my gosh that's so it wasn't, cool I just learned how to do it I was a year into it it wasn't like I was a master of the craft I didn't have any formal sales training there was no really formal training on anything they're like you know go out there and get it but I just applied the same principles that I was using in my life at the time which were honesty integrity being authentic with people and then just a general raised energy level or aura like letting go of like guilt or shame and all those things that kind of hold us down being able to address and let go of those allowed me to really connect with people and people pick up on the authenticity that comes with the raising of your vibration or, you know, the addressing of some of these issues and the letting go. Like I I believe that as humans, we kind of have an innate sense or, you know, whatever we call that gut feeling, whatever you want to call it or whatever, however you want to feel it. Intuition. Yeah. Intuition. A lot of people call it different things. So it's, it's our innate ability to kind of pick up on someone's frequency, I would say, or pretty much be able Mm. to assess. It's kind of primal. Yeah. Very primal. So like when you're true, there's instinct. Yeah. Some people, they can fake it, you know, until they make it, they can fake that. They can be really smooth talkers, but like there's a deeper sense of where I would never fight for a deal when I was like, when I'm in that place or in that vibration, it's just like people know that I'm not there to like sell them or bullshit them. I don't know if I can say that, but (laughs) then. I'm, I'm there to provide service and, and help. So that's kind of where, where my life shifted at that point. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. How cool. So you're there for three months. Mm-hmm. So that's like a pretty hefty amount of time too. Yeah. And it sounds like it was a really positive experience. Yeah, absolutely. So what point were you like, oh, alcohol is not the move. I need to move away from this. At the point of, you know, after kind of forcing myself to live without it for, 
you know, 30, 60, 90 days, like every day that went on, it made more sense as I got better naturally at interacting with people or dealing with my emotions is that became, you know, that was a solution to everything. So when I had to live without it, it was only when I figured out how to live without it, if that kind yeah. of makes sense. Yeah, it does. So living in that, it also turned into pretty much teaching myself social skills over again because I'd been using a crutch, you know, for that since I was 15 years old when, yeah. you know, you start drinking with your friends in high school or something. So removing that crutch and then relearning all these, you know, social interactions over, it's, it's hard at first, obviously, but then as you get better and better at it, you're like, it's not a, you know, it's not, alcohol is not the move. It's like, you really never needed it to begin with. It was just kind of a shortcut to like actually learning how to deal with your emotions, deal with other people, interact and like, you know, be able to handle what we call life or our experience. Wow. How did you feel when you started to detox? Because I mean, you had so much alcohol in your system mm -hmm. and it is a toxin. So like over time, like how did you start to feel? Were you like surprised by yeah. your self or what? Yeah. So like through that time, and I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll show you pictures. But I won't show you guys pictures, but like <laughs> I was very overweight, like really you know, inflamed, almost like everything was, oh, you know, I was not in a good yeah. place physically, mentally, spiritually, anything it was all misaligned. So when that happened, it also, you know, I dropped 40 pounds pretty much immediately after I stopped drinking. I'm sure that felt good. Yeah, I started picking up other habits for, you know, kind of restoring some good chemicals in the brain that our brain's looking for, you know, good chemicals that can, you can get through working out, you can get it through other experiences aside from drinking alcohol. So after that happened, physically, my life increased. Spiritually, my life increased. Mentally, I felt clear. Without the toxins, as you said, you feel better. Just generally, your energy levels are higher. Pretty much everything goes up with that, or for me, it did. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's amazing. So how did you then get into roofing? So my transition to roofing, and once again, like on this path through the sales side, my, my sales background was in air conditioning where I started. Moving into roofing when I was working for a different company, um, I joined up with Anthony and pretty much... I don't look too deep into decisions or people that I make decisions with because I think we talked about it a little bit. Um, is this, I feel that people come into my life, especially when I'm at like where I need to be energetically, like or frequency or vibrational level. Like when I'm in a good place, the people that like I need in my life show up. The people that don't probably start fading off, yeah. and like I don't have to like really worry about that. It kind of handles itself when I'm in a good place. So. Anthony and I bumped into each other and we're talking about it and he wanted to start a roofing company. I wanted to start an air conditioning company. So then we were just like, let's, you know, do it under one roof. I have experience in sales, air conditioning, but I'm also a quick study. So I learned roofing very quickly. And then we put it together, created ProTech um, and I've been doing roofing ever since. I love that. Mm -hmm. And one thing that he was kind of saying, so we were talking about this and it was really your thought, but if you're just like, if you are just totally on like totally authentically yourself and you make these decisions, no matter if it's good or bad for anyone else, it's just you. And like mm -hmm. you're honest and you live according to like what you yeah, feel is right. Yeah, true intention too. Yeah, like, like you're not doing intention. it to please anyone else. It's just like what honestly feels good to you and what you feel is right. Mm -hmm. A lot of people it doesn't align with. Right. And those people will move away from you, which is awesome. Yeah. In the moment, it can seem like a yeah, bad thing. You're like, why are all these like, people yeah. leaving? But it's like, it's making way, as we said, for the people that need to be there. Yeah. It's, like, it's creating space for what is right to come in. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. So a bit so of good. a perspective shift on people coming or leaving your life is. Yes. When you're in a good place, the people that are meant to be there are there and the people that don't remove themselves and I love that so much yeah. it's so true like my favorite quote that I live by is rejection is God's redirection yeah but it's so good and it's so true like I've had so many times in my life where I'm in relationships or I'm in jobs or anything and I just know I'm like some of these things are not right and I'll just pray and manifest mm -hmm. and it is insane like those people in those situations like literally remove themselves yeah. and I'm just like 
Well, that was easy. Yeah, you, find, you don't really have to do <laughs> no, much of anything. It it's just like happens, and you're like, cool. Well, mm -hmm. thanks. <laughs> I yeah, love but that. Sometimes we try and fight it, and we're like, no, like, yeah. no, this belongs or that belongs, and we fight it. But at the end of the day, we always find like, you know, oh yeah, should have just let well enough alone, right? <laughs> oh my gosh, seriously, I've I've had a, enough of that. Like back in high school and college, I had tons of people in my life, especially like that high school college age, like around like eighteen, nineteen, twenty so many friends where I was just holding on to them mm -hmm. for dear life like you're my best friend we were meant to be best friends and like no matter what went on I just like refused to believe that yeah. they, like they weren't right in my life until finally life like um this is one of the, this is a great quote from one of Sam's friends um he spoke at our elite summit I think his name's Anthony but he says life either gives you feathers bricks or trucks like semi trucks so it delivers a message with the feather first if you don't listen, then it's a brick. If you don't listen, then it's a yeah. semi truck, which I love that. I got it's my so semi true. truck. That was. <laughs> yeah, you did. You had a semi truck and then a train. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, yeah, all right, I, the I semi truck. I didn't listen to the semi truck, and then like the train came. I was like, <laughs> okay. The train came. Yeah, you got a problem. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, so I prefer feathers these mm -hmm. days. Yeah, you learn to start <laughs> listening pretty quick as yeah. as it happens more and more. That's the intuition too, especially like. It's such a beautiful gift when something terrible happens in your life or like you lose someone you love so much and then it like redirects you. It's like such a massive form of rejection mm -hmm. and then you get redirect, redirected and then you realize how much better that path is for you. Exactly. Because like life isn't usually what you think it should be. Like you have this idea of what it should be, yeah, but life gives you like yeah. what you really like need to become the person you need to become yeah. to do the things you need to do to achieve the things you are here to achieve. Yeah, we try and do life for what we want, but then, like, life gives us what we need. Right? It's true. And ends up being way better anyway. Mm -hmm. Like, Yeah, you start running into really cool people, and you find out you don't have to try. It doesn't have to be a struggle. Yeah, it doesn't have like, to be so hard. Yeah, you can you can flow and achieve the same things and meet the yeah. same people and surround yourself with so true. everything that you need. Yeah. yeah, and it just feels so good when you do get into, like, a good flow of life and, like, like, even, like, the hard times, like, the worst things you've ever been through, it's like, dang, look how strong I am. Yeah. Like, look what I'm capable of. Exactly. Like, if I can handle that, like, you, I'm sure you feel that way. 100%. Like, anything happens with pro tech, you're like, well, I've been through worse. Exactly. <laughs> At this point, there's really nothing, like, you know, I've, I've been through the experience we just talked about. Two years ago, I lost my dad, and I didn't have to turn to anything, you know, negative. I knew how to handle that situation. I was like... I yeah. was ready, but you know, life always is going to throw stuff at it, but it's how we respond is what's going to be our experience. Yeah. And that's, that's really what defines you. Right. You focus on what you have control over, right? Which is our response to everything external, which is out of our control. Unless we try and like change or control outside, like, and control what we can control as far as our response, the better and easier it's going to go. So true. Mm -hmm. And it really is, like, so incredible to witness. Your external world is a reflection of your internal state. Mm -hmm. It's, like, another thing I just live by. It's so true. Like, like we said, life is a mirror. Like, mm -hmm. life everywhere, on every angle, is a mirror. Yeah. So, like, the people that show up in your life are there to teach you, re teach you a lesson. And, like, the things, I love this, too. Like, you can't see in someone else what you don't possess in yourself. Right. So, it's, like, if it's something annoying that drives you crazy, it's probably because it triggers something you don't like about yourself. Yeah. On the contrary, if you see someone, you're like, wow, they're amazing. They're this and all these things. It's like, well, guess what? Like, you have that in you. And it's just it's like an inspiration to pull that out of you. Yeah, I agree. And I, when it comes to, like, once again, relating this to business and sales is everything is so much easier when you have an understanding of that. And then it's not such a struggle or a fight to, to sell something or sell someone. It's just kind of you're there providing your service. And, and things go with it. You know, people deal with oh, people yeah. they want to deal with. And people don't want to deal with negative people that kind of bask in yeah. guilt, whatever you got going on. It's, it's like true. you learn to let that go. And the success, the sales, all that things, you know, follow. So true. Mm -hmm. And like everyone says, I mean, um, sales really is just a transfer of energy. Exactly. And people don't really buy what you do. It's like who you are. Mm -hmm. Like they buy the person that's doing it. Um, and that's a big reason a lot of the guys on this podcast and in our industry have so much success because they're just charismatic, mm -hmm. good guys. And that's easy to feel. It's easy to see. And like, yeah. 
It's like, I don't know if I need an air conditioner or a new roof, but I like you and yeah. I want to work with you. Yeah, I trust you. Like, if that's what you <laughs> yeah. say, then I'm in. But once yeah. again, like, I'm living in a state of honesty and integrity as well. Mm. So it's like, they don't have to question it. I don't have to question it. Yeah. And I always say there's there's more honest money out there than there is dishonest money. They quickly, yeah. I love that. <laughs> they quickly catch on to that. And there's plenty of honest money out there. I love um, that. And that goes to show with, you know, everything I've done as far as awards won i've never had to lie to anybody or feel like i got over on somebody it all just you know yeah happened so how cool mm -hmm. so i guess um a final question just with like your story um was it in rehab that you just got sober because now you're years sober right like how long um four and a half years i haven't drank or done any drugs or anything so yeah that's sweet mm -hmm, four and a half years um but that decision you know it's a tough one to make on your own, you know? So like yeah. I had to be in like solitary confinement to like <laughs> start. And then I had to be transferred into rehab where they kept you accountable. So that transition isn't an easy one to do on your, on your own. And sometimes you have to reach that, you know, low level. It sucks. But if, if we can't make that decision on our own and truly understand it and see the other side of it and make it that, you know, 90 days to where you start learning how to live without it, it's, it's tough, but yeah. That's why I'm grateful for the experience to, you know, that I didn't get to a point where things got worse or yeah. things like that. So for people out there that struggle with it and they're not at a point where, you know, they in, intuitively or deep down we may know like this isn't good for me or like I need to make a change and we can kind of rationalize ourselves out of it. But if you're in that place and you never hit that you know point where you're forced to, it can be tough. So, you know, you have to kind of try take a leap of faith see you know see what happens on the other side totally. and it's scary honestly for someone that's relied on that to feel comfortable and feel happy and yeah. be okay that's some of the scariest things in the world but that is scary overcoming that fear like in everything we do is yeah is also how we get to place or grow right yeah. no matter what we're doing it's so empowering whether we go up to knock on that door and it's you know, we got those butterflies <laughs> or whether you decide to anxiety stop drinking or make a big change or start working out yeah. And I know for me personally, I, I've never been an alcoholic, but just um, kind of unsure with like depression and anxiety, different things. Like for me, I didn't really feel in control or like it was up to me if I was going to need antidepressants or anti-anxiety medicine again until I really got my diet and exercise right. and meditation practice like locked yeah. in. And then I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm in control. Mm -hmm. Like I can control these things and like it is my diet and my exercise and my like mental well-being that determines yeah. like my mental state yeah so now it's like i forget sometimes and i'll like eat crappy food and stuff but then i remember like after a few days of eating crappy food like, i start to get it. anxious yeah. i start to get a little like down feeling and i'm like oh my gosh like my f diet yeah, is my antidepressant whatever, medicine you're cons whatever you're consuming whether yeah, it's what you're consuming i'm like this mentally, my lifestyle you, is you know. my antidepressant or mm -hmm. it is my medicine mm -hmm. so that so, yeah. can be super empowering 100 percent. i dealt with all that like while i was drinking my anxiety and depression oh, were yeah. like through the roof and then like yeah, as this transition started the meditation started the physical activity started the reading started is all that stuff kind of started to dissipate and I felt Yay, okay. You know? I love that. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. So four and a half years later, here we are. We own ProTech. We have employees underneath us that love working for us and show up and help me every day. And I have people in my life that, you know, help me. I learn from, I grow with, and that I would never, you know, want to get rid of. And they all didn't come by me like, you know, fighting or, you know, trying to, trying to find people to be there it all just kind of showed up so i love that it's pretty cool what happens when you start living in a higher state you know <laughs> that's pretty cool <laughs> <laughs> pretty cool <laughs> so there you have it um anything else you wanted to add that's it i hope whatever i said can help anybody and if you ever have any questions for me um feel free to reach out i'm alex hoffman and i can either provide you advice or direct you in a place to where i can help yeah, I love that. And also one more thing. Um, I heard about at Win the Storm, there's actually a program called Roofers in Recovery. Mm. But it's a nonprofit and every single month they have a fund that sends like, I think it's like two to four roofers to rehab. Because I know that that industry has a lot of issues with that. And I, 
Yeah. yeah, a lot of people that need help. Yeah, so. contracting in general, you kind of find a lot of it with yeah. people like that and don't have the knowledge or know the options to be able to kind of yeah. fix how they feel without it. So It's true. And like, just That's know you're not alone. There's so many people going through this stuff and there are there is a light on the other side with mm-hmm. beautiful, beautiful things Seriously. on the other side as well. So that wraps it up for today. Um, Please, I hope you enjoyed it. Leave some comments, um, share it if it was helpful to you or inspired you. Um, Make sure to follow us at the D to D, or it's at D to D experts on Instagram. Um, We have an epic Facebook page. It's called D to D tribe um, with tons of people from all the industries who will give you all sorts of knowledge and tips and tricks on so many things or if you have questions. And then also follow at the Sam Taggart And if you guys have any questions or want to like check out our events or what services we offer, please go ahead to our website, www.thed2dexperts.com. We have so many sick things coming up and check out the tour. It's coming to a state near you. It's going to be so epic and so incredible. Highly recommend it. I'll be there. Yeah? (laughs) Heck yeah, me too. Let's do this. Sweet. Well, that's all guys. Have a good one. Peace out.